both on iPhone and on Android, of course, that uh, allows you to view and read different things inside of Google Currents. If you've been a user of something like Flipboard, it's not going to be too terribly different. Here on the right hand side, you can see a preview of the current that I've set up using my website. So I'll navigate through, it gives you uh, a way to preview for iPhone, for Android, different tablet devices, as well as an iPad. So here is the content that's broken up kind of in the different sections. And if I were to do a rotate feature, it would show you a preview of what my current area would look like, what all the different information that I have going on in currents would show up like on a mobile device flipped over even sideways. So how do you get here and what do you do? I'll put the link to this in the blog, so take a look there for it. But the first thing that you do is that you go through and you add in the information, for instance, your name. So in my description, I might put in my tagline and then fill in my appropriate category. So in this case, I'm going to say it's under business and I will click update. Now you see that that information is updated. The next thing is to add in your icon. So upload some photos of yourself for both your favicon and for your normal splash image. When people get a link to add your app, your photo will show up there as well. We'll see if you want to add an email collection. I do not have that turned on, but people can opt to give you their email addresses using this if you'd like. You can configure Google Analytics and it says um, that you need to go over to Google Analytics and add that information in. So here's my Google Analytics. I would look at what is the original number that's on it uh, back on my dashboard and then add that in, which you see that I have already done and then hit update if needed and it says visit the sections to start adding content. I've already gone through with the sections but what you get is a few different options. The RSS feed is content coming from your website, so namely your blog. The articles could be any kind of documents that you have. You might want to put a uh, Google Docs form in there for a contact area. Photos could be any kind of photos, that different photo accounts that you would like to show off. A video channel, I've hooked up my YouTube, but you could do other ones. And then social updates. This is where, for instance, in mine, I'm a heavy user of Google Reader. I have an RSS feed of what I'm sharing in Google Reader that I run through FeedBurner, and then I pull it in here. I could also hook up my Twitter updates or some of the other things. So what you could see are the different ones that I've listed going down the left-hand side. And under each of these, for instance, if I were to click social updates, it would ask me where is this coming from. And then if it's not from Google+, Plus, it will ask you some additional information, and then you can drop that information in. In this case, I should not have hit create, I should have hit back. So, cancel this one, and there we're done. Uh, then what you get is under each of these things, it says presentation options and it lets you select kind of what kind of a template you would like. So in all of these sections, I've already got the ones that I want, so I'm going to cancel, delete this section, that's fine. Type yes. Now it's deleted, so you see that that's there and done. If we were to look at, for instance, my section on Instagram photos, I've gathered an RSS feed of my Instagram photos and here I could say that this is a photos layout. Again, I could go through and pick different types of templates in there if I wanted to. Under Facebook, I can I have an RSS feed of the content I'm sharing to my Facebook fan page here. So I could switch these types of things around. So maybe I want it to be custom or whatever. You get the idea. Then we can get into managing articles and it says choose section of articles to manage and this is where you get to edit any of your settings that you might already have. So news I'm reading is an RSS feed of my Google Reader content coming in and I could click to create a new article here and uh, override the template and add some different things in. It says how to link to this article if I wanted to. So there's all sorts of different options that are there. Media library just shows you any type of pictures that you've uploaded to go with your things. 
grant access, it says who can read this information. You could set it up that you've got team managers, so if you're making this instead of branding it for yourself, you can have it for other people. Uh, you could switch it so that uh, instead of just everyone seeing your photos, only managers could see it if you wanted to. So you have a way to do some internal things there. You also see that we can get into the testing area, and this shows you a QR code that you could scan, which I will be placing onto my site. And uh, it says when people are scanning this, it's going to prompt them to get the app through their app store if they don't have it already. It will open up a page and say, uh, would you like to go to this app? So the link, after you've installed the app, the link that goes from here, if somebody were to scan that as a QR code, it would open up and prompt them to go over to that app, the Google Currents app, on their phone. Inside of the Currents app, there are lots and lots of different types of currents. So let's take a look at under Google Currents dash additions. You can see all the different types of of editions that are out there. And if we click on any one of these things, it would we can automatically click to uh, go through. So that is how to create your own Google Currents. That's a little bit about what it is. Check it out over on your mobile device as soon as you can. Get your website converted over. Even if you have a mobile uh, layout on your site, this is also a good option. And then what you might want to do is instead of directing people inside of, say, your newsletter to the mobile version of your site, you could share this little QR code so they can get it inside of the Google Currents app if they would like to as well. Experiment around and take a look in Google Analytics to see how your Google Currents are impacting your website.